Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's starting to get a bit late in the day and I've been waiting for some reasonable light because when I'm doing everything in bloom obviously there's some relatively close shots and if I haven't got the light they're, they're often out of focus but I don't think I'm going to get the light. It's just a drizzly miserable dull grey day and if I leave it too much longer it's going to start getting dark which will make it even worse. So uh, we'll run with it as it is and we'll see how we go. Um, so this is everything in bloom on the 8th, a day late on the 9th because the 8th fell on a Sunday. Uh, so when that happens I've either got to go a day early or a day late. So uh, this is everything that's actually in bloom on the day. So we're not looking at spikes or buds or anything like that. We're just looking at things that are actually open on the day. Um, and we'll, we've got to start in here, actually. God, the light light's even worse in here. <laughs> I'll do pop-ups for the names, but this is virtually finished blooming. This had, um, this, I think this had five, four, five spikes on it. Um, they were good spikes, branched in some cases. And um, this is one of the indoor set. Um, they were bought deliberately to be grown indoors to replicate how a lot of other people grow because they've got no choice so uh, that's what's going on here and um, this one's already pushing out quite a few new growths which will be the next ones to bloom so um, yeah this is doing everything all at once it's growing roots new growths and it has well virtually finished blooming um, <laughs> those will probably fall off tomorrow or the day after so that's that one and then coming out here I found the first Vander Bloom on the floor this morning, so I'll have to take this off my hand so that I can hold it up high enough. Um, this has been a good spike, and because it's bloomed late in the year, with the cooler temperatures, these blooms are lasting incredibly well. Um, it's, it's got no ID. Um, it's effectively a, an Ask Ascender, so it's a um, cross between a Vander and an Ask Ascentrum but they all got reclassified as Vanda, so it's just a Vanda hybrid. Um, it's possibly Orange Delight, but there's no way to absolutely prove that. But uh, it's a good, bright, cheerful orange. Very nice spike on that one. Right, let's get the camera back on my hand. Oh, minding my thumb, of course. Now, I'm not going to be able to film these as such, but I do have three Restrepias out in bloom at the moment. There's the one down in the corner. Actually, I do believe that is desperately trying to focus despite there not being any light. That's um, Falkenbergii, um, a species, and it's the, probably the Restrepia I've had the longest, hence the size. It is a big plant. But that's um, one, two, three, four, five. It's probably got seven or eight blooms on the go at the moment. And then <clears throat> next to it is one of the... Uh, this was one of the Eric Young Foundation hybrids that I got a while back. And these are large blooms for Restrepias. Um, again, I doubt if I can focus. And then there's the one I, <clears throat> the one I got at my Burnham's trip, um, whenever it was, a couple of weeks ago. Um, blooms seem to last rather well, and I wanted a red one, because most of the others I've got are shades of gold. Um, possibly red stripes, but this one has a red base to it, so that's that's why I got that one. So that's the three Restrepias. The, uh, the fourth one, another large one up here, that hasn't actually got any blooms on at the moment. That one's been struggling a bit this year, but um, it's picking up. It objected to being repotted, and the trouble is with Restrepias, if you um, don't keep them hydrated, especially when there's a bit of heat around, they do this. Yeah, the leaves go crinkled and they don't come out clean. Um, but they are coming out clean now. Uh, you know, higher humidity and better temperatures. And out of the corner of my eye, I wasn't expecting this. So I'm just getting this one out because I didn't know that was open. Tiny little blooms. So first time blooming. Well, I can't profess for these blooms being mine. I bought this with the spikes already there with the buds already on it. This again came from the Burnham's trip. This was one of the ones I managed to uh, escape out of the private area. And um, a parent of one of the twinkles. Yeah? So 
that puts dwarfness into the mix because these are quite miniature oncidiums and floriferous and the base for yellow to get into the colorations and the other parent is over here so they both happen to be bloom in bloom at the same time so those are the two parents of the twinkles um, this one is vigorous and a reasonable sized oncidium it's not a huge version but it's quite large again normally branched um, spikes and many of them and highly fragrant now the other parent could be fragrant but because it's only just opened I don't know yet <laughs> I've only just spotted it so um, yeah both parent twinkles and out of that it's, it's weird because twinkles can come in almost pure white with a yellow centre lots of shades through pinks into a, a deep well, you can't call it crimson it's, it's an orange browny colour rusty colour the one called cinnamon um, shades of pinks and reds and the yellow one um, and all that from those two parents so <laughs> it's a matter of when you when you do a hybrid like that you know you um, between two species you get loads of seedlings and in the main they will be incredibly similar but you're going to get some oddities and it's those oddities that get the um, get the variety you know and then once you get an oddity like you get one that comes out like the the cinnamon one once you get that color you can put that color back in again and see what comes out and that's how you get all the different uh, shades and things like that it's trial <laughs> trial and error and a lot of patience <laughs> right so that's those two um, one was a surprise now the Catlia angel heart is still going strong and again the blooms this time round have lasted a lot longer and it's because it's cool They've got the low temperatures, so they're lasting. I can see the first tinge of brown on one of the blooms. So they're not going to last too much longer, but what will happen here is these three will go, leaving that one on its own, because this one came out quite a few days later. So it will be the last to go. And that's the only Catlia out at the moment, but I do have quite a few sheaths with buds in. Um, some of those buds are starting to move now so we will get some more catlias down the line um, also up here in the in the roof this is my dendrobium thai angel um, phalaenopsis type and i like these blooms an awful lot i've actually got two of these plants because i split it um, only one in bloom at the moment and it's waggling around in the gentle breeze from the fans up there and that is a gentle breeze everything else is shut down <laughs> uh, no temperature out here, no light, no nothing. And the only um, Tolumnia in bloom at the moment, which has also been open a very long time. Um, now, this was filmed last month, and at that point I'm sure I said these blooms are going to go soon, and yet they're still with us a month later. So these are lasting well. And I do believe that is a branch just starting. Yeah. So if it branches, then we will get some more blooms after these have gone. Um, not all Tolumnias do that. Some only do it sometimes, and some do it with very a, a very regular habit. So they get their flush of blooms, they branch some more blooms, and occasionally branch again. Um, and some of them just grow that way. So that's that one. I'm going to film that because out of my pinguiculas, this is my favourite bloom. Um, blooms on and off, it just sort of keeps going, um, as do some of the others. Where's the other big one? Well, the other big one's here. Um, now this has more blooms on it, but they're smaller, and to me they're not quite as attractive. Um, but they're not orchids, so we, <laughs> we digress, as the expression goes. Now this is my um, challenge plant. This was uh, hitched a ride in with some plants I bought off of eBay, um, and it's it's it was it had a label stuck in it, challenge plant. So first of all, we had to find out what the hell it was. Now it had a spike on it with a couple of buds. They took an awful long time to open. 
Um, but I was very pleased when they did because that is a very attractive bloom. Well impressed with that. Both the colour and patterning on the lip and then three sepals with not a mark on them. And yet the two petals are highly spotted with a totally different colour to anything else that's on the orchid. It's a very unusual bloom. So uh, that's that one. Uh, desperately needs a repot, but wish it will be done soon. It just falls out of this pot, but it, it has got lots and lots of roots, but it's in very tightly compact moss, so it's going to have to come out of there soon. And then we've got this one. This is uh, Miltonia from, um, well, I picked it up on my uh, visit to Lynn's and then round to Alan and Sue's and it's from a, a guy that's passed away Wessex Orchid Society and it was one that was picked out for me because it was you know it was known that I've actually got quite a few Miltonias and it was highly unlikely I didn't have this one and they were right I didn't have this one again it's a it's a typical Miltonia bloom shape and color and pattern there are many Miltonia hybrids and species that look along those lines. So pleased with that one. Um, we've got my Latoria type up here with its alien blooms. Um, last few just opening over here. But, uh, so there's a petal and a sepal stuck together there. I'm just helping them. <laughs> they do that sometimes. They get a bit of happy sap sort of stuck between the two and they just stick. But um, yeah, looking at this head on, you, you don't get the colour because the petals and sepals have got very little colour or patterning on the inside but they make up for it on the back which is where all the bright the, the deep green and the deep burgundy purple spots are um, so they are very attractive looking at them from behind or from above um, but then you have got the coloration on the lip, which is very good as well. And the shape, and it's an unusual shape. Again, a deep green lip with a deep burgundy purple patterning that's not just stripes, it's stripes with bits that join them up. And then inside the lip, you've got, yet yeah, again, quite incredible patterning and coloration. So, yeah, it's a, out of the Latoria types, that, that is quite special. Um, and it is used in crosses to get some of those characteristics to go in and mix in with others. Um, I can't really count that, the last bloom's gone. We'll forget that one. <laughs> it ceased to be. <laughs> uh, right, and then this, these two were both got at Burnham, so they're not my blooms, they were already in bloom when I got them. Um, this one is in fact a replacement for one that I had a long time ago. And all the buds are open now, so there's no more buds to come. So now we can sort of see how long they're going to last. But um, I suspect, I mean, this is a mass-produced orchid, so perfect conditions and all that sort of stuff. And I suspect I will never achieve a spike as good as that ever again with that many branches and um, that many blooms. But, um, yeah, it's very deep colour. And uh, I can see on the screen that the camera is lightening it slightly, but not, not too much. It's a very, very deep colour. And the petals and sepals have got a waxy look to them. They've got a sheen on them. And that little tiny touch of gold around the outside. So, uh, as I said, it was one I lost quite a long time ago, but I remembered the name and what it looked like. And as soon as I saw it at Burnham's, I thought, oh, that looks very much like that one I lost. And it turns out it was exactly that. So, and then this is the other one that I bought at Burnham's. And this vibrant orange red on the lip caught my eye as I walked in the door. So um, I had my eye on that one straight away. <laughs> and there was only one. So we uh, picked it up and took it out to the back. <laughs> we thought we'll have that straight away. That's that one. And then last but not least, and it is as well, is the... Um, Dendrobium Victoria Regina. Now today, in the light I've got today, the camera looks like it's behaving itself and actually rendering that colour quite good. It's not right, but it's not bad. And now it's starting to chuck it down. <laughs> well, there was definitely no point in waiting for better light, was there? <laughs> 
Um, but yes, this is um, this is showing this. It's as I said, it's not as blue. It isn't blue, but it's very close, and it's showing it closer to that blue colour than it did last time I filmed it on the video camera. So uh, there we go. That's that's what I've got, and a fair bit of it's been bought in. Um, Soto Anum and my blooms, um, Tilumnia, the Cattleya, the Dendrobium, that Dendrobium. Um, these are not my blooms, that would have been if it was still in bloom. Those are my blooms and these are not. So a uh, bit of a variety and not a huge amount. But it's that time of year, that's the way it is. So uh, here we go. Right, forewarning, tasteless joke coming up. And this is, uh, <laughs> this, this is on the premise that um, when I walk to the shops, the parade of shops has got one of those really old-fashioned funeral directors, you know, that's got the horse-drawn coach, you know, with the big black horses with all the plumes and the feathers, and the guy sat on top with a big long sort of um, stick to sort of keep the horses in order. And all the mourners walk behind. They don't all sit in flashy cars and everything. They all sort of walk behind in their, you know, mourning dress and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I <clears throat> turn the corner, I often come across, you know, a, a funeral taking place. And um, one such funeral, and it did look a little odd, but uh, it doesn't matter. But bas basically... It was a long line of men stretched out behind the horse and cart thing, you know, the hearst, um, right into the distance. It's, it's quite a sight. And at the front was a guy with the biggest German shepherd you have ever seen in your life. And I always make a point of, you know, showing my sympathy. So I said, um, so uh, who's died then? And he said, it's my wife. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He said, and, and is this her beloved pet dog? He said, no, 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 this is the dog, dog that mauled her to death. So I sort of thought to myself, I, I sort of nudged him and I said, can I borrow that dog? He said, yeah, sure, we'll have to get to the back of the queue. See you next time.